Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for another sheet load rewind where we're going to be rewinding back to July of 2019. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to create today, find out how to download the sheet load of cards and if you're a channel member, how to download the free bonus printable. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Last month, I started a new series called Sheet Load Rewind, where I will each month be revisiting a past issue of Sheet Load of Cards. This is just to kind of see how we can switch up older editions and maybe introduce you to a new one if you're new to my channel. I will have the Sheet Load Rewind playlist linked in the description box below if you want to check it out. Now at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you how you can download the printable from July 2019. And if you're a channel member, I have a bonus printable for you and I'll tell you how to download that. Originally, the July 2019 sheet load of cards yield 12 cards from two pieces of pattern paper and some cardstock. Today, I'm going to be switching it up a little bit because it did have a lot of pieces to make those 12 cards. So I'm going to show you how you can simplify it a little bit, but you will only end up with six cards. So this is a good one for you if you don't necessarily need, you know, 10 to 12 cards from a sheet load. The sketch is here on the left, and originally these two strips on the side and these two pattern paper pieces on the top and bottom were different pieces, so you covered up the gaps with the cardstock mats. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to cut your pattern paper so the background pattern will fill the entire card front, and this pattern paper strip will go from top to bottom. This will change the supplies you need a little bit. You still need those two pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper. For your cardstock, you'll only need three now. You need two for CS1, which are the mats here, and then one for CS2, which is your image and or sentiment. Now for your card bases, you can cut this in half to three solid cardstocks that you'll cut in half and fold in half for a card base. I will also be changing these single dimensions a little bit, but when I go to cut my pattern paper, I will tell you about it and pop them up on the screen so that's a little easier. If you do want to make it this way, when you download the printable or if you have it already, you could maybe just sketch out those new dimensions here in the open area. Now the cutting diagrams for the pattern paper are a little bit harder to see how they were cut. This was back when each pattern paper was cut in its own way. So I just cut it or I just put the cutting lines right on top of the pattern paper. But this was originally 24 pieces that were one inch by five and a half inches. Well now we're gonna be cutting pieces that are four and a quarter by five and a half. And then down here, these were originally two and a half by four inch pieces and now we're going to cut it two and a half by five and a half just again makes it a little bit easier a few less steps involved for cs2 this is where your image and or sentiment would go this would be a great opportunity to use up some cardstock scraps because you're not even cutting 12 out of here you only need six now I will be using the new free channel member printable. Now this has 18 sentiments. I only need six, but I'll have some left over for later for other projects. If you ever want to know more about the perks of channel membership, which is usually at least one free printable or cut file a month besides what it says in the perks, I do have a link in the description box below that tells you all about those three levels. For my CS1, because I love the pattern paper I'm using so much, I actually got out two pieces of 17 pound vellum. This way I have a little border between the pattern papers, but it won't cover up that pretty pattern. You'll see some of it through that vellum. 
And finally, for my pattern papers. I chose these two pieces from the Cartabella Summer line. You know I love me some florals, and I love those polka dots that match it. As I add other products and tools while I'm doing the voiceover, I will let you know. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started today by cutting the two pattern paper pieces for each card. I will end up cutting three of each from each pattern paper for a total of six of each size. I'm going to start by cutting off the branding strip from this paper. That way it will fit in my trimmer when I go to cut it down. I'm going to start by cutting two strips that are five and a half inches tall and 12 inches wide. This is the height of all of the pieces that need to be cut. Once those two cuts are made, I rotate them 90 degrees and from the top piece I cut two pieces that are four and a quarter wide and then from the second piece I cut one more piece that is four and a quarter inches wide. Then the remaining three pieces, the two and a half by five and a half, get cut from the scraps that are left over. Next, I brought in one piece of my vellum that I'm going to cut per the instructions for CS1A. Now once again, instead of two sheets of this, I do only need the one. Now because you can download the printable for free, I won't go over many more dimensions. I just wanted you to see me cut these quickly. I then cut my second piece of vellum per the instructions for CS1B and if I had scraps of vellum this would have been a good chance for me to use those because I needed less than half of that sheet to get all of my final pieces that I would need. The usual next step would be to cut down cardstock for CS2, but like I mentioned before, I won't be using that. I am going to use the printable. Now, if you are a channel member and you are going to download this, make sure when you go to print it that you print it at 100%. Some of the crop marks might get cut off on the top and bottom, but that is okay. Just go ahead and cut it down to the final size of two and three quarters inches wide by one and three quarters inches tall. You'll see when I cut it, I cut them into strips first of the two and three quarters, and then I brought one of those back in for my six sentiments and cut them to one and three quarters inches tall. Off camera, I cut and folded six top fold card bases out of heavyweight white card stock. Now all of those main pieces are ready to go so I can start assembling the cards. I do this in an assembly line process. First, I put all of the sentiments onto the small pieces of vellum. Now these do fill the vellum left to right, but there's a small border on the top and bottom. With these small pieces, I did have to fight a little bit to get them centered onto the vellum okay. You'll notice that for the next pieces, I brought in my Misty and I used that ledge at the bottom as just kind of a stopping place where I could place my vellum and then butt my pattern paper up against that line. That way I only had to worry about centering it left to right and not with having to align it to the edge of the vellum. After all of those pieces were matted, I then put adhesive on the back of the sentiment and I placed that onto the center strip. Now here is a place where you could adjust this however you wanted it from top to bottom on that piece. I continued putting these cards together and I'll let you see that process, but I thought while I was working on it, it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. I so enjoy asking these to learn a little bit more about you and share a little bit more about myself. Today's question is inspired by an event that I recently signed up for. I would like to know, have you ever been to any in-person or virtual crafting events? If so, maybe let me know which ones and how much fun you had. 
you can let me know your answer in that comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've seen my question and have answered it. I had already shared this news on my community tab, but not all of you might have seen it. I recently signed up for Stamp Joy 2021, which is taking place in October in Des Moines. My sister and I are going to meet up there. It's about halfway between both of us for a fun crafty weekend. This event is by Tailored Expressions and I actually attended virtually with my sister two of their stamp joys that were during you know all of the shutdowns and we had a great time virtually so i know together we will have a blast now i have no affiliation with tailored expressions or stamp joy but if you're interested in finding out more i will link it in the description box below you still can sign up and if you do go there you might spot me wearing one of my new shirts that i have for sale now yes i have merch that link will also be in the description box below Now that all of the card fronts were on the bases, it was time to jazz these cards up a little bit. And the first thing I'm going to do is punch some little fishtail banners using the scraps. I punched six from each of the pattern papers, and these are going to go on the inside to add a little extra decoration. Once they were all punched out, I added some adhesive to the back and then I took the one, the pattern that was on the center strip on the front and I placed that down first. It got aligned to the left of the card, just about one flag up from the bottom. Once that was in place, I added adhesive to the second pattern and that got placed a little below that and a little bit more to the left. The little bit that was hanging off the back, I just brought in some scissors and snipped that off. This is just a fun way to add interest to the inside. And lately I have been trying to do this more to go ahead and use up those scraps while I have them out. I continued this same process until all six cards were decorated on the inside and then it was time to add some bling to the front. I will be using my Moonshine Confetti from Cartwright Sequins. I have talked about this before. Once again, no affiliation, but I have been loving using these. I love the sparkle and the fact that they're pretty flat and there's no hole in the center. I will be using some leftover glue dots from past paper pumpkin kits along with my jewel picker to place these on the card fronts. The first thing I do is add a little glue dot where I'm going to want each piece of confetti and then I pick up three pieces one at a time with that jewel picker and place it onto a glue dot. I continue adding these to each card and I do switch up what sizes and where I place those from time to time on the cards. And here's a look at all of the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's cards that were inspired by the July 2019 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now let me tell you how you can download this printable for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. And then for my channel members, I'll tell you about the free printable. If you would like to download the July 2019 sheet load of cards, I have a link right above my product list in the description box below. You can click on that and look at it on screen or print it out. As always, I do ask that you are a subscriber to my channel before you click on that link. It's super easy. You can just click the button underneath this video and maybe ring that bell while you're there for notifications. Now underneath the link, it will say something about a password to watch the video. There is no password on the file. 
you getting access to this is just you watching all the way through to find out how to download it. Now for my channel members. If you would like to download the bonus printable for the month, it will be linked on our community tab later today. You'll just want to look for a picture of these cards and the link will be in the description. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.